Welcome, 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 welcome to Music Mondays with Terry Khan, where our guest is no other than the beautiful Latifra Night. Wait, let, let, me tell, let me turn you down, girl. Hold on. <laughs> oh, my God. Hello, Latisse. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm sorry. I'm a few minutes behind my signal. I live in the mountains, so every now and again, my signal acts a little special. Listen, and it is you. quite fine. <laughs> Listen, we are so honored to have you with us. Those of you who are now joining, welcome to Music Mondays with Terry Khan, where, as you can see, our guest is the lovely Latisse Crawford. Share, share this to all of your friends. We're going to jump in it because, you know, Instagram is disrespectful. They definitely will cut you off at eight o'clock. Yeah. And I have so much that I want to talk to you about. So first, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You look One good, girl. You look good. Thank you. I'm trying in this in this quarantine. I'm trying to look like something. Yes. <laughs> DIY braids, everything. We'll get into that later. Anyway. Everything. I got my I got my slave braids in today. <laughs> But <laughs> it's what we have to do, right? It's what we have to do. But again, yeah. I, I wanted into it. The world knows you from Sunday's Best season two, runner up, right? That's where you got your re your world recognition. But I am proud to say that I've known you from yeah. eleven ten T <laughs> Cow Avenue, yes. Morning yes. Star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was back in like. I want to say 2001, 2002, when I was visiting your church, um, I heard you sing and I said, who is this little, right? <laughs> who, is this, who is this little young lady with this powerful voice? And um, you are so sweet, so genuine with an amazing voice. And I got to love you even more when I heard your testimony that you weren't even supposed to be able to sing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, 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 wanna, I wanna start with that because I don't know how many people do know your testimony, but I, I wanna start with that first miracle and we're gonna get into some more. So please share with us. Yeah, I, I lost my voice for about five years. I, um, I used to have a really, really high voice like Terry can tell you. Um, mm -hmm. back in the day, I was singing up in the clouds with Mariah and them. Yes. And I, I wasn't anything medical. It was, I think it was either that God was trying to give me a story, you know, or, or do something with my voice or either yeah. it was just my lack of appreciation for it. I did not, I was not that little girl that had the dream of being a singer. Like that wasn't my dream. It wasn't what I wanted to do in my life. I had a whole different <laughs> way that my life was supposed to go. Wow. And, and, you know, so for five years, lost my voice. Um, if I talked too loud, it would like be gone for weeks to a month. Um, and so, of course, my range and stuff had went down. At one point in time, I couldn't sing at all. If I tried to sing, it was that was it. Um, and I was going through the toughest season of my life. It was like right around the time where I was kind of, you know, really dating and having breakups and, you know, meeting mm -hmm. friends, losing friends, and so yes. much things were happening, you know, in my life. Family members were passing away and stuff, and I was going through so much, but couldn't even say it, couldn't tell it, tell it. But I started writing a lot. Um, a lot of times, that's how I had to communicate, was write it down and show a piece of paper. <laughs> that's how bad it was. My um, goodness. And yeah, so that was going on for about, for about five years, and I was begging God, like, God, please, just give me just a little bit. If you let me, I won't make another face again. Right. People want me to say, I, won't, I won't roll my eyes. I won't suck my tongue to get my attitude together, Jesus. Right, like, right, I'm going right, to be right, okay. Right, right. <laughs> and, you know, he gave me the little bit back that I have now, and... I didn't even, not saying I didn't appreciate that, but I didn't understand what to do with that. You know, it was like I had to learn my voice and sound all over again. I'll never forget that that was around the time Kimberell came out. And my cousin David, you know David, David oh, yes. was like, TC, listen to this girl. Y'all don't call me TC. My family calls me TC. I'm saying TC, talk about my family, but don't call me TC, call me Latice. Yes, <laughs> well, my cousin was like, TC, you got to hear this lady. She sounds so much like you, and I'm not comparing us at all. Oh, I just want to make sure I put that out there. She's the voice. I, I'm not just got a little throat. I'm not, you know, Let's but see, I call you Minnie Kim, but go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I ain't got nothing on Kim. But okay. I listened to her and I was like, wow, we have similar textures and yes. I can do this and it'll be acceptable and people will still like it. And so yes. I was 
really listening to her a lot. So say, like, oh, you sound like her. Or you have so many inflections like her. It's mm -hmm. because she became the person that I started studying, not to, not to sing like her, but to right. understand what my gift was now and what I had to do, you know, what I had left to do with my gift. So yeah, that's, that's my testimony, girl. That's it. <laughs> so five years, you lost your voice. Doctors couldn't explain what this was. And at what point did it just come back? Like what, what happened? <laughs> it just... Honestly, it never did really come back to the full capacity that was, you know, this is what is left now. And I definitely say that when I go and I'm singing at a church or stage or wherever else, mm -hmm. what you guys can hear me do, meaning in range wise, mm -hmm. sometimes I'm like, I don't really know where that came from. You know, I, I know that it's because God wanted to make sure that I, one, I didn't have a lack of appreciation for my gift anymore, but he mm -hmm. wanted me to understand that he didn't need me. Wow. And so, you know, like I said, I, I knew how to sing my whole life and everybody called me to sing for everything. And I promise yes. you, I just, oh, they want me to sing again. Oh. Yeah. And it wasn't that I was conceited or anything. I just, I was over it. My whole family sang. Yes. And so I didn't really understand how important singing was or what a gift it was i just assumed for a long time everybody sings right like right, that's not right. special because right. like i said you know my family everybody listen in my family, the dove family. okay the next biopic <laughs> right. needs to be about the dove family we got listen to okay we, seriously, everybody sing. the children sing. everybody sing. The kids sing <laughs> they play instrument i have five-year-old cousins who play organs you yes. know and all kinds of stuff it's crazy so again yes. i didn't it wasn't that i was trying to be conceited it wasn't that i was like oh whatever it was just that i didn't understand you know, the gift that God was, you know, trying to use in me. And so I, I steered away from it. I also stayed away from it because I didn't want to accept ministry. And I knew that if I started mm -hmm. singing, that ministry was going to come along with it. And I really only wanted to be responsible for me getting to heaven. I was already having a hard Listen. enough time getting me there. I didn't want to have to help none of y'all. I was like, you on your own. You know, what? <laughs> figure it out. It ain't my job. But I knew if I accepted the call to do music that that would also, would also come along and I'd be responsible for people. So I think God was just like, Listen. when people say they hear that small, still voice, God was like, no, you're not getting those. Get your tail and go do what I said. You know, That's and it, girl, you all up in my notebook, all up in my questions, <laughs> because um, especially when I listen to, you have a song from one of your previous albums, um, chosen that always listen to oh, you know me. and as yes and as pastor's children right that we are it's kind of like that unspoken rule that daddy's a pastor uncle's a pastor you just have to follow in this yep. line of ministry yep. you know and like you said well like the bible said many a coffee were chosen and I've always wondered if you ever felt pressured into ministry or this is something that you you wanted no, I didn't want it. I'm telling you, I wanted no parts. It was a no for me. It was a no for me. I didn't want no parts. I didn't want no parts of God's people. You know, there's never been a time I've been sick of God, but I sure be sick of his people in the, in the place. I've yes. been ready to go. That's a whole nother live. A whole nother I'll be, hour, yes. I'll be, listen, all of them. Like, Lord. I get it. Yeah. But <laughs> I knew, it's like, you know, you know, it's, I felt like with me with singing, if it was like, if you're skinny, you should be a model. If it's all you should be a basketball player. Yes. You need to be a singer. And I yes. felt like for myself, it needed to have more meaning and more purpose for me mm -hmm. than it was like, oh, it's something I could do, so let me go and do it. And I think that right. that's what I was trying to show me, that you're not just going to get up there and just be able to just do what you do without any hardship. I have to teach you now and make sure that right. this is a ministry so that you have something to say to the people that I'm about to assign you to. This happened years before Sunday Best, you know, right. and I thought that he, he needed to make sure that I had something to write about, that I had something to say mm -hmm. and something bigger than just doing some cool notes, but making right. sure that when people really came to me and needed to lean on me or lean on something I said or the way I'm living or walking, that I really mm -hmm. had something, you know what I mean? to really um give back to, to the people. So yeah, I mean it it, it all worked, you know, I, I guess it did. <laughs> I oh oh no, it honey, it did. It did. <laughs> because there's not one time um and back in the morning star or when we see you now where we can't see and feel your your ministry is authentic. 
I said, no, this girl did not practice these ad libs. Okay, this is Holy Spirit ministering, and you have such an amazing ministry. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I, I kind of <laughs> want us to walk through this journey again. So Kurt Beck, and every time he said you were a star, Yolanda said you were a star, all of Brooklyn was like, we would try to wait for you to see that. We know that. <laughs> Um, but even before then, like, what was the point? What made you audition for Sunday's Best? What made you say, let me come out of the tri-state area and go for this huge platform? If I'm being honest with you, I went on Sunday Best to make everybody leave me alone about Sunday. <laughs> that's that's what? the truth. I'm trying to tell y'all that this was not, this was, I think, the dream everybody else had for me. I'm telling you, y'all don't oh. understand. Me and my cousin David Dove would be... Yes up in his attic or in my house in my basement and he'd be like Tisha, you gotta do it like this you gotta do it. and i'd just be like um, because he loved a rehearsal he want to have a rehearsal on thing and i'm like can we Shout be out to David we love the whole like thing. oh yeah no. but i didn't realize like i said that even at that time how much he was grooming me you know again for this so i went on sunday best or the auditions just to prove like see i'm not going to make it Take it and everybody leave me alone. Let me go back to my job that I love and leave me alone. And that's not what happened. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So if you were not a singer, this is a sidebar question because you keep mentioning it. Like what was your dream? If it wasn't I to honestly sing? I honestly wanted to um I was out of promotion at my job. I had probably had every position there. I was at the job for 14 years. It was a nonprofit called the Police Athletic League, which is really big in, in, yeah, in New York. Yeah. Okay. And I worked there at PAO for 14 years. And when I was there, I was a program coordinator. I was okay. um, on the brink of getting a promotion as uh, the uh, um, business director um, of my okay. own center. And I always had a dream that one day I'm going to buy a building of my own and I'm going to yeah. turn it into like a facility to kind of rehabilitate people from jail or, you know, people wow. who have been abused or whatever. I really wanted to make it into like a campus where people could come for spiritual. It was going to be called the Whole Life Center. Okay. And yep, I had a name and everything for it. And that was my plan. I still feel like that. God will use this platform to fulfill that and probably that's on a I much mean. bigger scale than much. I could have ever have done without it. Yeah. Um, yes. But yeah, that, that was my ultimate plan. And if I wasn't going to do that, I was going to be a chef. <laughs> well, we do see you cooking on Instagram now. I was watching like, you <laughs> get down. But I think uh, the world can uh, agree with me when we say we're glad that you went to the <laughs> <laughs> now on a practical note I just want to know and you can be as real and candid with me as you want you know the industry is a whole nother it's a whole, whole nother beast you know it's no longer the tri-state area it's no longer friends and family that everybody loves Latisse Crawford right so mm -hmm. is there anything that transpired or anything that you saw once you stepped into the industry where you said mm, God are you sure I'm supposed to be in this type of industry is there anything at any point where you say that you, you you regret it yeah i definitely will i think that um for me it was realizing that this is also a business as mm. much as it is you know uh me being a gospel artist is not as much of a ministry as people would like to believe that it is this happens to be the type of music that I sing, but it's right. the same equivalent as if you were a doctor and you believed in God, but you had to go, you know, uh, heal other people that don't, you know, right. a lot of times my assignment is not only to um, church. You know, but yes. a lot of times it's hard for people to digest that, digest that and understand that in order for me to bring people to God, I have to go where the people are that are not with him already. And if I'm only in your four right. walls, right, I'm bringing nobody new. I'm talking to the same people. And if we're going <laughs> to right. bridge and we're going to bring people over, it doesn't mean that my message changes when I go to these other places. But sometimes, you know, I can't be be within the four walls. Sometimes my music only talk about what we understand in the four walls. I have to talk about some real human stuff too. And, so that and, I can and you do. understand, <laughs> you know, that we all have the same symptoms. We all have mm -hmm. the same stuff mm -hmm. that we deal with, that we go through the differences and the is the source that we use. You use these resources. Sometimes church people, we use church as a resource and we forget right. about the source, which is God. So my music is more so just trying to bring people back to the source, not the resource. Church is great. Four walls is great. But what do you do in a moment like this where we're all stuck in the house and you can't get to your church if you're not connected to the source? Come on. You can't. Hold on. You just can't fly by what you just said. You just said. Let me go get my offer. Let me go get my offer. 
Give me my orphan plate real quick. <laughs> What's your cash? I need to pin your cash app. You said that, and and please fix 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 me, right? You said that sometimes church people use the church as a resource instead of going Absolutely. to the source. Absolutely. We think going to church is enough. <laughs> After we come from there on Sunday, there's nothing left to do. We don't sing our songs. We don't pray. We don't do whatever. But we're not remembering that our building is not what's important. It's who's inside of our building. And so I, I just want for my music to bring people back to that point, back to the source versus the resources. So good. So good. <laughs> now, see, Amy, I want to skip a few questions and talk about your latest single, which is called Amazing, and it is amazing. No pun intended, right? Um, this you. line, this line took me out, sis. Thank you, Lord, for sneaking behind my walls. <laughs> and we think about, about huh, and all people, especially the church people, this, this facade you know this facade that we carry as the, these smiles these six inch heels these hats this 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 lipstick these dresses these facebook filters you know what i mean and i, I just want you to speak on a little bit where you were when you wrote that song amazing because it is so it's so real i think it's so needed thank you for getting you know that deep because these walls are destructible for our people so i just want you to speak on that I'm gonna go a little, a little further than that. This Holy go Ghost, you know, a lot that's a wall that we, we pretend sometimes, you know, we telling people I'm saying and I don't do this and I don't do that, you know, that that church, that church wall, that, that holy mm -hmm. ghost that we try to tell people that we have that on the weekends we well, ain't we ain't really got it. So well. for me in that song, I was talking about all of the above, like that wall of is me block the facade, like you said, yes. of sometimes God, when I be trying to sing these songs about how saved I am, Lord, I got the same temptations, Jesus. But thank you for going around that, looking beyond my faults and Ooh. seeing my faults. Thank you for coming around that. Even when I didn't look that good, when I didn't look like right, you, right. you when I didn't look like your, your love, when I didn't look right. like how you give, when I didn't look like how I should be living, you snuck mm. behind all of that and you still love me. You're so amazing. So it wasn't just the wall I was putting up because that's what it was talking about as well at that time. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was going through so much different stuff, relationship stuff, trying to figure out, you know, how to navigate and doing all this other stuff, how to be a mother, you know, a whole lot of stuff. I wrote this yes. song four years ago, you know, okay. and it just putting it out now, but I didn't realize how much more I needed it now in this space, you know, mm -hmm. than I did when I wrote it, you know? And so, wow. you know, like I said, it was talking about all of the walls and facades that we put up for people. Most of the time, people get our representative. They don't get <laughs> our real character. The real you. The you want for them. You know what I mean? The per wow. like, this is the person I want you to see. And so I was putting that, that, that representative out for a lot of people. But the person that I really was, I wasn't, I wasn't sure that other people would be able to accept it. That when I wasn't you know, the greatest lover or the greatest friend or the greatest person and people were ready to throw me to the side. Those mm. were the times that God was like, no, I see you and I see that you're being this way because of hurt. I see that you're being this way because you're broken. I see you're being this way because you feel traumatized. I'm going to mm. look past all of the things that, that other people don't think are enough about you and all the things that you, you want to be, but you don't even know how to be. You know what I mean? And I'm going to go past that and I'm going to still love you anyway. Because he looks beyond our fault and sees our needs. Wow. I want you to to just encourage uh, whoever is, is watching tonight, whoever's going to watch the replay. You know, I know though that, and um, I'm only asking you this because as you are pretty transparent, even on social media, <clears throat> we've seen some of the things that you you have been going through. So I just wanted to ask you, like, what has been what has been your lowest point so far? Like your, your, your breaking point and how did you overcome that? I have, oof, I have <laughs> a breaking point probably every few months, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be like, oh God, you thought what, what's happening? That's um, real. I will say that I learned that I can still trust God, but be human. Mm. The Bible gives me permission to do that. It gives me permission <laughs> To, to to go through every season. And I think that when you can forgive yourself for needing to be human sometimes, like, and you remember, like, I'm spiritual, but I'm not, you know, the spirit. <laughs> you know, right. he has the right. I do. 
So sometimes I gotta still ask, like Lord, um, <laughs> uh, right? <laughs> wait a minute now. But minute. um, <laughs> I had a dream a number uh, about two years ago, and in the dream I saw a bear tree. The tree didn't have any leaves, and, I, and but but it still had all these birds and all this stuff on it. And I was trying to figure out, but the tree looked so good; it looked healthy and everything. And so I woke up, and I, for whatever reason, started doing some research on why a tree loses its leaves. Okay. And when I found out the answer, it says because in the fall season, the tree understands that if it continues to hold on to all this stuff that it's trying to feed, the mm -hmm. tree itself will die. So the tree knows, like, I have to let go of all this stuff. I want to feed you. I really do. But wow. you are not what defines me as a tree. I'm a tree whether you are here or not. And so I have to let you go and be okay with you dying for a season because you're going to come back when I'm able to provide, when I'm able to sustain to you, to sustain, sustain you. Wow. I can't sustain you right now. Right. And so I've become very, very unapologetic about letting things, people, whatever, go, opportunities so that mm -hmm. I can self-preserve. Because if I die, there are no leaves. Right. You can't come unless I exist. So anything that's an extension of me, I feel like God was trying to show me, like, be okay with it not being here for a little bit because I need to preserve you so that you can produce it again. But it also says that when the leaves fall in the coldest seasons, mm -hmm. when it's raining and snowing and everything else, the leaves are soaking up all of the water and replenishing the tree. So he also showed me too that the things that you fed into, they're going to feed back into you, but you have to be okay enough to let them go and trust me that I'm going to let them feed you too. And so I, I would encourage anybody to just, I'm not saying throw people away. What I am saying is that you have to, you have, you, we, sometimes we try to grip and hold on to stuff that needs to exit. Mm -hmm. They don't think we can exist without them, but understand mm -hmm. that I say you are a tree and God is trying to preserve you. He's trying to keep you. He's trying to do stuff for you so that you're able to feed other people. So be okay with letting things go. Be okay with going through all of your season. It is always your season. Some seasons just look different than others. I said, I said that a few months ago. <laughs> yes. I said that a few, I said as a Christian, right? Every season is your season, but there's Absolutely. a season of winter. There's a season for, and every season has its purpose. Absolutely. You know, because some seasons are your seasons of growth and development so that you Absolutely. can't bloom. You can't just be blooming. Yep. <laughs> oh, right. You can't bloom where all the time. Where, where'd you come from? Where'd you grow from? Come on. Let's come on. Come on. They want to bloom, but they don't want no rain. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. They don't want to be hot. You know the people who just complain about every season? It's too hot. It's too cold. <laughs> it's raining too much. It's too muggy. Like, would you? Always so something. true. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I, I, Guys, I want you to be able to answer your question, so I'm going to ask this last question. Um, and then we're going to open up the floor for for, for yeah. the people watching to ask their own questions. And then we go hear you sing. Okay. So what is the congratulations on your new project with E1? <laughs> and what is next for you? What what's yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. What what's next after COVID, of course, Lord. Right. Because the way <laughs> that this woman got us set up, she is angry. She so is mad. She is bitter. Somebody that made her mad. <laughs> she's not going away. Right. Right. I um I started acting recently. So I have okay. a few things coming up with that. Um, you know, I'll I'll have some artist merchandise, you know, that, okay. that we're working on. Um, you know, I'm always kind of dibbling and dabbling and working on something. I've been kind of dibbling and dabbling on doing some quick tips, you know, for like okay. food stuff and working on a, a talk show called Girls Talk. Um <laughs> Yes. I mean, it'll be like a, a, a digital type of social media type of thing. But, yeah. you know, I'm always working on different things and different ways to minister, you know, same God, different platform. So I'm, I'm working on, you know, something. It's always something going on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. At this point, we're going to open up the floor. Um, if anybody has any questions that you want to ask, I did see a comment. Someone said, I love your tribute to Olita Adams on Black Music Honors. Oh, thank you. Yes, honey. Yes people slain and rightfully so i mean every time every time you could go out people are just like wow you know like i've been, I've been trying to practice your riffs and i just i gave up i said it's not my ministry I, I just i'm gonna just sing straight 
and the Lord will be glorified. Listen, I wish I could sing straight. That that see what I'm trying to say? We just ain't never Wait. happy. We just ain't never happy. <laughs> we ain't never happy. What do you mean? You wish I wish I could sing straight. Like it, there is no there's no straight in, in, in my being. I wish sometimes <laughs> I could just sing a song and just sing it. I think it's like the prettiest thing to just sing straight. Me, my voice, if I try to sing straight, I'll be like, ha, 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 ha. Like, I can't even help it. <laughs> it's, it's a disease. It is. It is look, that's a be is, that, is that a weird statement? That's a beautiful disease? It's not. Okay, never mind. That's a good, to me, that's a wonderful thing. Okay. Calvin to Entertainment said, could you be a guest on my face back to Instagram? Calvin, you know, come on my show show and try to steal right me. he gonna put request on your show <laughs> okay but you know i do that's bold i give you props okay she has a the answer is yes <laughs> you can hit up the right person you can reach yes. us at team latisse at gmail.com <laughs> team latisse at gmail and shout out to your manager she's just absolutely wonderful thank you thank you shout out to kim shout out to kim for real for real <laughs> do, does anybody else have any questions um for, for miss crawford dealing with her journey um and you have how old is your son my son is nine going on 25 look i i, I know about it i know about it and how do you how do you balance out motherhood with what you do with ministry um i take them with me a lot i learn how to say no to a lot um <sighs> I, I, I understand what i can do and what i can't do um for wow. both for him and for, you know, sometimes it's like, baby, I got to go because you want to eat, don't you? All right, like right. snack. So let me go. But then other times it's like, nope, I can't do that because I need to be my son. So I think learning um, learning what's important, you know, and, and, and picking those important moments that sometimes you absolutely, you know, have to go. And then other times, you know, um, I'm not going to say I always got it right, but right. I try. <laughs> That's that's such like a sensitive topic for me because I feel uh, like I, I struggle with mom guilt, hashtag, yeah. you know, because for me, like my children came into the picture very, une very unexpectedly, right, on two different occasions. And it's like now you're trying to do this, this ministry mm -hmm. and you don't want to feel like you're neglecting them and now you're spreading yourself thin. So I always, I always ask artists, children, like, well, how... How do you balance it? But your son has a, your son understands who you are. Well, I think it's because very early on, you know, when my son hit about four or five, I mm -hmm. realized like, you know what? I can't be that mother. I can't be that mother that feels like that I need to give up everything that defines me to be a mother to him. You know, I know you didn't ask to be here. You know what I mean? I know you right. didn't, and I'm not going to ever neglect you. But in order for you to get the best out of me and the best mother out of me, we you both got to gotta have you. you know what I mean? That yeah. I, I have to function in somewhat of me. Like, I, I remember when I first had him, there'd be days that I'd be like, man, I ain't even take a shower today. I ain't even eat. My food is cold. And I was like, see, no, 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 no. I can't be that person. You could wow. cry for two seconds while I hop in this water and wash my tail. Like, I'm not going to stink for you. I'm not going to stink for you. We're not going to not eat. You know what I mean? Because yeah. so I, I had to re also remember, like I said, that as much as this is a ministry, ministry comes from what I'm able to do when I do my job. Yes. You know what I mean? Like I, I yeah. can't do ministry if I don't do my job. So Thank and you. ministry for me is not just going and singing to people. I know that helps y'all out, but ministry mm -hmm. for me is making the check so that I can go and give to people, go and pay for some stuff. And hey, you need your rent right. paid, you need this thing. So right. the ministry for me is not only me going and singing my songs and you paying for the concert that I'm singing at. Mm -hmm. No, that's not the ministry. Right. And people can tell you that if they want to. That ain't the ministry. I don't care how many people healed, delivered, set free. That's not the <laughs> only form of ministry. That's so real. Ministry is also giving and making sure people are taken care of that are not in the walls. That's a whole other topic. We'll get there later. I'm saying that I had to have a very <laughs> honest funny. conversation with my son and tell him, like, sweetheart, I love you. And as much as I can do, I'm going to do it. But if I had any other job, mm. I'd find you a babysitter. And I wouldn't feel guilty if I went to work. This is Thank a job. You. This is work. I got to go. Right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> Thank you. That that was that was uh, a selfish question. That was for me. Um, <laughs> Elisa, hey Renee. Elisa Renee J is an amazing independent artist, a uh, friend of mine. She's asking a question. First, she said your voice is amazing. Facts. Thank you. Have you ever struggled with confidence in your gift, and how did you combat that? Every day. Um, if you go look at my last post of today, I was talking about how much I hate 
posting singing videos. Um, Cause I, sometimes to me, I feel like I don't have the same creativity as some. I hear some of the stuff my artist friends do, and I feel like, what make them even think about that? Like, I hear the texture of my voice sometimes, and I'm like, man, I wish my voice, my voice was higher. You know, I think that in anything that you do, you're gonna always have an insecurity. So I'm just like everybody else. I'm just this human where I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like that note. I do videos 50 million times before I post it. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, all the time. Because it's again, it's me. Somebody would be like, Matisse, it was fine. But in my head, I'm like, no, I could have did, uh, <laughs> instead of, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a nitpicker. So you, you are your own everything. worst critic, baby. I'm my own worst critic, yeah. The way I overcome it is I realize that when I listen to something and I feel it, it yeah. doesn't really matter how it sounds to me. It's like, mm -hmm. and I feel like people receive, Donald Lawrence said this to me a long time ago. People like what they feel more mm -hmm. than what they hear. And so I'm always trying to make sure that I'm making people feel. So if a lyric sounds like it's got a tear in it or a lyric sounds like it should be sad or, right. you know, melancholy or whatever, or happy, I try to make sure that I'm emoting the same emotion. Right, right. You know what I mean? So if I'm singing a sad song, I'm this is my posture so that the notes can come out a certain way. If I'm happy, I'm in a certain posture so that my yeah. notes come out a certain way. So, yeah, that that's really, yeah. that's really it. Okay, I, I think you've stunned everyone on my live, including myself, when you said that. <laughs> We're just like, I'm sorry, have you heard yourself? Do you know who you Listen. are? Okay. You don't want <laughs> um, a question is, if you weren't a performer, what line of work would you be? And we answer, you answered that question, but um, maybe you came on really late. So if you want to just go over that real quick again. Originally, I was saying that I wanted to have a center, uh, like a rehabilitation center or like a campus life center for people who um need her rehabilitation you know mentally emotionally socially whatever it is um i wanted to do that or i would have been a chef and and we all hope that you still do that center like, oh yeah that, that's done. coming absolutely <laughs> on, a, on a bigger scale you know you did so no need to apologize girl or sir i don't know 14 street vintage no problem um the whole center anybody else have any questions i i want to hear some singing um do you play any instruments i don't <laughs> okay. i don't i wish i did but i don't <laughs> and it's so interesting cuz when i when i listen to you sing um a, a friend of mine his name is peter collins i don't know if you're familiar oh hello peter collins okay. everybody knows P peter right listen peter it's collins like, bro my god that's right what what is wrong with him <laughs> But I know, you know, I've known him for a long time. I know that he studies, like, you know, you you study the scale. Because, I see, I'm a technical person. When I'm trying to study riffs, I, I'm on my little keyboard like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So it just sounds like you you knew, like, the scales, but it could just be you come from the Dove family. So that's I, I think that it's because I was around musicians my whole life. You know what? I'm going to tell you exactly. Because my father was a pastor. He had a storefront church. Yes. and we had no musician so a lot of times I had to be the singer but also filling in the parts vocally uh -huh. that were missing otherwise everybody would have lost time and you know so I think that that that's part so kind of comes from from that yeah that's so amazing sing to most said Latisse you sing like you play girl exactly right <laughs> sounds like you studied your did you go to school for music at all I didn't I did. And I'm telling you, I had no interest at all. School of at life. All, except singing around my house, you know, annoying everybody because I was singing all day. But to say that I thought about doing it professionally or wanting to do it, nope. My goodness. Wow. Wow. Right. Everyone said, wow. Wow. All up and down the scene. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, I'll give like one more minute for anyone else who has um, a question and then. Oh, so cool. Jay said, what, what tips do you have for people to persevere in tough times? Um, I think we, we spoke about that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just realizing that I, I always tell people to, um, trying to see how I want to word it, uh, realize what is, be very mm -hmm. conscious of what is, and then decide how you want to exist or exit. If it, you don't have to stay in it, but you do like, I think sometimes we like to believe the facade or we like for people to like tell us a lie or whatever, but it's like, no, it doesn't matter why it is. Just understand that it is. And when you do, then, then 
you figure out how, if you want to exist in it or if you want to exit from it. Latisse, are you going to be writing a book soon? <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Vlogging, like I just you and the way you say it is just like oh, you know, I'm just spitting all this knowledge. This is nothing. I, I don't know if you uh, realize like the gems that <laughs> you are speaking. Well, I have enough cer enough hours of certification. I'm a um a certified life coach in, in three okay. areas. So um, okay. And I just I just enrolled back into school to be a licensed practitioner, NLP practitioner. So, yeah. What? So, um, yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm certified in ecology, cognitive behavior, and relationship facilitation. Okay. So, is there anything else that we should know about you? Is there anything <laughs> else that, <laughs> that that you do? So somebody says she's a preacher as well. Oh, we know her. We know her to preach. <laughs> Don't put that calling on me. <laughs> you preach every time you open your mouth, but um, yes. I'm a, I'm a bootleg else? preach for the rest of my life. <laughs> please, please. Yeah. Is, are, do you have any other uh, <laughs> things that we should know? Uh, I have a degree in dressmaking and design. Uh, well, you are I always very that's... stylish. Oh, I love style. I love yeah. fashion, anything fashion. And that probably would be another thing that I would have done if I wouldn't have been doing music. Anything behind the scenes. I'm I'm such a hermit and contrary to personality as I have, I am extremely shy. So Yes. I yeah, I'm extremely shy. So I always tell people if you see me somewhere and I'm and I don't speak, please don't think that I'm stuck up. I'm just really trying to find somewhere to hide and crawl into my skin. Like <laughs> that's so crazy. But she yeah. is genuinely not let me tell you, I, I you know, I met you in two thousand one, I think maybe till like two thousand three. I didn't see you again <laughs> until 2012 we were on the same bill for the Stella Awards uh Urban Urban Soul Cafe oh, and I was yeah. like, she was, hi Latisse you're like hey Terry I said oh my gosh you remember my <laughs> and she said hi you gave me a hug I was like oh my gosh Tc no nobody you guys didn't call her that it's just we know her right that's the same <laughs> L. Robinson Jr. is because he is all up in your business. He I, said, I know that's my producer and my, oh. my little brother. I know exactly who that is. That's why I'm okay. ignoring him in his comments. So that's, that's why we can't ignore him and we have to believe everything he says. <laughs> are highly prophetic. I believe it. I believe it. Um, Maya said, I love your style. Hey, you. um, a lot of artists are. I'm naturally introverted. Martin Christie says, Hello. Hey, Come on, Brooklyn. So, so yeah. Long. So are we are we to expect the Latisse Crawford uh, clothing line coming and the book? Absolutely. And all the stuff on your life. I'm trying to tell you, listen, speak all of it. Speak all of it. I would love to see that happen. Um, like I said, I love fashion. I love okay. you know, design. I love all of that. So I would love to see that happen. Um, so we're going we gonna to speak it. We're going to speak it. Is somebody going to call me and call my people and I'm going to call their people? Jay <laughs> Jay Bolin, I need what to up, call Chris Dickens and make that partnership. Come on. Listen, make it happen. Robinson, yes, I agree. He said she's a jewel to this it's world. Coming. I love it's because coming. she's it's a coming. total package. <laughs> Y'all trying to make sure I don't never have no time to myself. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be your friend because you are a truth You are a truth speaker. Um, then Dave said, hello, can we get a podcast? I would absolutely love to do a podcast. I've actually entertained it a few times. Okay. Um, like I said, it's so many different things that I want to do that sometimes I have to like really put things into perspective and say, okay, what can I do right now? So right now I'm just trying to focus on the music to make sure that that gets to the level that it needs to get to yes. so that all these other things will make sense and will come. You know what I mean? I always tell people you, when you have too many things going on, one, you don't have the time to focus on anything, but two, right. you want to make sure that you have the audience for this stuff. And that's something, a nugget I'll give to artists all the time. True. You don't have to keep creating new music. Keep pushing the music that you already have, because exactly. if you keep creating new content, you spend the money, you're not making it back because people are not making it. Keep pushing what you already have until it makes it. It makes sense beat it till till it's death because it's good you invested your money into it right yeah you invested your money into it so don't you don't need to go back into the studio and invest more money if people are not buying what you already paid for make that money first
this is a woman's wisdom, guys. <laughs> I just don't I have know. a filter. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you don't need one. Not on this show, you don't, honey. <laughs> Thing to Mo say, her, her story's making me hungry. Okay, so listen. Um, Alisa <laughs> said, thank you for that. So, so far on Music Money is with Terry Khan. We, uh, we have the whole life center for you. We have your cookbook. We have your fashion line. What else? Let me make sure I didn't forget anything. <laughs> oh, and My your book. And I think that we're going to open up a church, too. But we're going to... We, no. We gonna and a t-shirt. Come on to the whole life center. We give you some spiritual enrichment over there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, Latisse, I just, I, I want you to go forth and I want you to minister to us. We have 15 minutes left. I want you to minister to us in whatever vein that, that you would like. And I do want to make sure that we end with some encouragement for, you know, our current situation. Miss Rona, that does not <laughs> seem to be leaving us at this juncture. Listen, listen, since everybody's been asking about if I play an instrument, I wrote a silly song a, a, a few uh, years ago that says, if I could play the sweetest symphony, uh -huh. a classical tune, all for you I would. That is my voice and the song that is my instrument. I'll open up my mouth and let it fall. From my lips, I am the music. The melody is in my heart. Tune in my melody. So I will sing, and my throat will play its orchestrated piece. Such sweet music, I am the music, he made me music, my voice is my instrument. La da da, la da da, la so I will sing and my throat will play its orchestrated piece such sweet music I am the music he made me music. My voice is my instrument. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, you you don't even need a guitar. That <laughs> just <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, that was a song I had to write for me because there was a time where I, I really like beat myself up because I wanted, like I said, all my family plays and I wanted to know how to play. And I felt like, again, that my gift was not adequate enough. That was one of the songs that I had written when I, I was not able to sing. And I was saying, if at least I could play an instrument, like, man, like I could play it out. I could play what I was dealing with out, but I couldn't do that. And so I was writing those words to God saying like, man, if I could play an instrument, God, right now in this moment, like I would play you the best song to express how I feel, but I can't. This is what I have. Can you give it back? That was my, my prayer. And we asked, that was what, when I was asking God to give it back. You, I, 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 I pray that you know how much of an inspiration you are like your your mm -hmm. unique voice. You know, it goes beyond that you're, you're amazingly gorgeous and you have this voice but when you speak it, it comes from a true place you know and I, I want to just thank you for your transparency um I want to thank you for the for allowing God to use you the way that he has you know and everyone that knows you you know we are rooting for you we know that this mm -hmm. is only I mean you've accomplished so much so much and yet I feel like this is still only the beginning for you <laughs> and I'm so excited to see <laughs> you know, where God is going to take you. And um, I'm really trying not to cry because these are these new magnetic, magnetic. <laughs> it's like, That's why I ain't even put none on, girl. girl. <laughs> I ain't put no lashes on. <laughs> I feel like they're just going to fall off if I blink too hard because God, I miss my nail salon. But um, <laughs> I have a song request if you were granted before you go, please. What's that? Um, 
I have never heard somebody saying, Lord, I'm available to you. Like, ah, I, <laughs> that's my favorite I, song. You're probably so sick of that song, but if you can please bless us with that song. I'll give you guys a snippet of that. Um, that's one of my favorite songs, so I <laughs> never want to sing that song. <laughs> Gave oh. me my hands. Hands to reach out to man to show them your love and your perfect plan. Ooh, gave me my ears so I can hear your voice so clear. I can hear the cries of all these sinners. But can I wipe away their tears? Gave me my voice. Oh, 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 oh to speak your words, to sing of all your praises to those who may but with my eyes I see a need for more availability there's so many hearts that have been broken so many need you to be free so here I am I am available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord, to show someone the right way. And enable me to say, hey, hey, my storage is empty, and I am available to you. Why, what, why is it that you said you, I just I'm trying to I'm trying to understand you, Latisse, because you said you wish you could sing straight. It, I just wish I could do a quarter of what <laughs> you are a bit you are able to do. Like I literally hear every instrument in wow. what you sing. Wow. That is amazing, Latisse. Wow. I'm telling you, I think it's the fact that we don't we don't ever appreciate what it is that we have. We yeah. always think it could be better or more perfect. I'm saying I heard so many wrong things while I was singing and I'm like, and I have a hard time not showing it on my face. <laughs> so my face. Thanks. <laughs> right. I kept opening my eyes to see if somebody was going to say that was wrong. That was wrong. I'm like. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I pray that every time a doubtful spirit comes to your head, even for half a second, the, the Holy Spirit would quicken you and remind you of the gift. Tell me to get it together. Thank you. Of the gift that he gave back to you to give to the world. To the <laughs> yes, oh, right? Man. Come on. <laughs> Alicia says she wishes she has a tenth. And the voice is the only instrument that you need. It's so good. Thank it's so good. Thank you, guys. I want I want to thank you so so much for your time. And um, mm -hmm. you know, I I asked you to sing that song not only because I absolutely love hearing you sing, but it has such a powerful message. And I know that on my show, a lot of independent artists usually come, you know, to get inspired. So I want to end off just by you telling them. What does that song really mean? Like we, everybody wants the glitz, the glamours, the lights, the the big stages, yeah. the industry, yeah. but you know, you being in it, what does that really mean? To the call and say, yes, God, I am available to you. What can I just want you to speak on that and talk to independent artists that are watching right now? 
Um, what I always try to tell artists whenever they're coming into any form of this industry to be satisfied with the part of the body that you are. are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that I'm not for everybody. I'm not for everybody's taste, but I always said that if I have to just be a toe, try walking without one of your toes. You're still needed. So I understand, like I said, that in the industry and because this is a job and you know, everybody's <laughs> trying to make money, that sometimes you feel need to try to be a different part of the body because to you, it seems like that part of the body is more important or that part of the body is used more. Wow. But understand that your part is significant. It's wow. very significant to the body. And if we didn't have every single part, every vein, every piece of skin, every hair, mm. when my mother was um, fighting with cancer, um, you had I asked about my lowest moment. That was one of my, I lost my mother on March 1st. Yes, and I can tell when you. she was suffering from cancer, she didn't have hair, any hair, mm -hmm. no hair, mm -hmm. eyebrows, anything. And so her eyes and stuff were water and she could smell everything. Sometimes she felt yeah. nauseous when we were cooking. Yeah. And she was like, you don't even realize how important again, a hair is yes. and how it protects you. And so, so even if you're just a hair, understand your importance, your place, your significance. You are needed. You are valued. Continue to create. It doesn't necessarily mean that you might be on a record label. Maybe you're just meant for your church and you'll be the biggest praise and worship, you know, leader there is out right. there. Right. Understand what your right. gift is. Understand what your part of the body is. Understand what your significance is and walk and move in that. And you will be successful. You will feel success. Success is not always about being known or being in the highest place. It's about walking in what you are yes, and who you are. And yes. as long as you do that, like I said, people ask me all the time, oh, you're so overlooked. You should be here. And I'm like, no, I think I'm right where God needs me to be for me to get to the next. He understands that if he gives too much at one time, I am, um, I'm a dreamer. Mm. And a few weeks ago, I had this weird dream that I um, was trying to fit something into like my phone or something. Okay. And it broke. And so I went to the store and I was asking the woman in the dream, can you fix this so that I can put the rest of my stuff in it? And the woman said to me, no, because the stuff that you want to put into that, that has all that old stuff that you should have cleared out, there's no more space. There's no more space. Fix it. It's broken. And I was like, what? I woke up the next day and my literal phone crashed. And I was like, what in the world? What's going on? So I went to, to the store, I went to T-Mobile. I changed services and everything. I have Verizon, I went to T-Mobile and was like, you know what, I need to change my service, I need to get a new phone, I need to do whatever. And I was like, can you fix this one though? And the woman repeated those, said those same words to me. You were loading too much stuff into this phone and the stuff that you wanted to put, the new stuff that you wanted to put in will not fit with your old stuff. You either have to delete the old stuff. And I said, God knows in that phone, I probably had a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have had in there. So just saved as, I, as saved as I am. There's That's time. True. That's, That's right. great. That's right. And as much time as I had in there that I knew a long time ago, I should have gotten rid of some text messages. And I'm being metaphoric, but some pictures, some gotcha. different things that we need to get rid of that don't fit who we're trying to become anymore. And we keep trying to fit it in. And God was like, no, I'm going to erase everything. Everything that was of the old, I'm erase it. You don't need that stuff anymore. Walk into who. Gotcha. So understand that when the journey is lonely, when you feel like you're by yourself, it's because God is trying to speak to you so he can give you what you're supposed to give to other people. I hope that encourages you. Just a little bit. <laughs> that is, oh my God. I just, I just want to be a member of your church. Um, I want a whole life center. <laughs> and listen, listen, we live. Latisse Crawford, thank you. I cannot thank you enough. We again, we are honored. I do not take this lightly. I don't just say, well, you know, people are quarantined. They can come on the show. Well, you have a wife, you have a son. I'm sure you have a lot of other things going on. So I really appreciate you being here um, on Music Mondays with Terry Khan. Guys, go out, download her latest single, "Amazing," and watch the music video, girl. You were killing in them dresses. Thank Dude, I got new music coming to y'all. Single is dropping okay. very, very soon. Let's so y'all stay ready. tuned. Make sure you hit the alerts yes. in my, my my social media accounts. Make sure you go to my webpage. Stay Please. tuned. My webpage is LatisseCrawford.com. Make sure go. you guys keep following and look out for the new. I'm telling y'all, it's coming so soon that you're going to blink and you might miss it. So go and make sure you do it. But get amazing right now because amazing okay. is available right now. 
we can't wait. We can't wait to see what God has in store for you. Stay blessed. Everybody, thank, thank you for joining. Tune in next Monday. Music Mondays with Terry Khan at 7 p.m. That is our show for tonight. We love you. Latisse.